CataractCoach.com. Double phaco incisions. That's making two phaco incisions in the same eye opposite each other. And the, of course, the reason is for treatment of astigmatism. This is a patient who's having routine cataract surgery. We'll make the paracentesis there. Look carefully at the limbus. You can see the two black ink marks represent the 180 degree meridian. Putting anesthetic inside the eye. So the anesthesia here is topical tetracaine, and then inside the eye, this is lidocaine, 1% um, preservative free, which has been cut 50 50 with balanced salt solution. And so now here comes the dispersive viscoelastic. Filling up the anterior chamber, make sure you get a normal physiologic pressure. If the AC pressure is very low, your tunnel length on the incision is going to be longer. If the AC pressure is very, very high, you'll get a shorter tunnel length. So you want a normal physiologic pressure. Holding the eye of the fixation ring, here's our diamond keratome, starting right at the limbal vessels, having a nice consistent tunnel length entering the anterior chamber. This is a 2.75 millimeter incision. So now opposite, you can see it's a little bit tougher. You have to still hold the same instruments in the same hand. So keratome is in the right hand. But to have it a little better access, let's have the patient look all the way to the side. If we have the patient look to the side, that's better. We can have a much better approach. Because remember, the patient's nose is in the way otherwise. And so we want to have an almost identical incision there on the opposite side of the cornea. So now you have two incisions here, which are paired, and they're going to help treat that against the rule of stigmatism. And they'll give half diopter to one diopter flattening, an average of about 0.75 diopters. And so that's going to really help this patient. So we'll finish up the rest of the case. Here's the capsulorexis. That goes beautifully. And what have we learned from this? In a small study that we did, we saw that paired incisions that are against the rule or steep at 180 cause about 0.7 diopters of flattening. And the same type of incisions, again, 2.8 millimeters wide, that are at the 90 degree or with the rule um, meridian, those cause about one diopter of flattening. So here you go at the end of the case. I was in the capsule bag. And it's important to seal up these incisions Remember, you have an extra incision, so you really have to take your time and make sure that both incisions are well hydrated and sealed up completely, and the eye is completely watertight. So we'll take our time to do that. And again, having the patient help us by looking towards the side. When the patient looks over there, it's a little bit easier access for us. Now, this is a very good technique for treatment of astigmatism in the lower ranges. Remember, in the USA, the lowest power torque lens available corrects one diopter at the cornea. And in this patient where it's 0.75 diopters of astigmatism, even if you put a torque lens in, you'll overcorrect it, and especially when you make your main incision, because that'll cause additional flattening. So incisional approaches are important. A wider incision is going to have more effect. So a 2.8 millimeter incision is going to have more flattening than a 2.2 millimeter incision. Also, the more central the incision is, the more effect. So if we make it at the limbal vessels, a little bit less effect, also a little bit more predictable and heals better. A shorter tunnel length will have more effect. A longer tunnel length will have a little less effect. So you want to be consistent here with your incisions. So for one diopter or more of astigmatism, I agree, use a toric lens. There's no question about that. But for 0.75 diopters, and like in this case, it really makes a lot more sense to use an incisional approach. So our nomogram for paired 2.8 millimeter incisions is against the rule, those paired incisions will cause about 0.7 diopter of flattening on average. And with the rule, it's going to be about one diopter of flattening. And remember, more effect with a shorter tunnel length, a more central incision, and also advanced age. These older corneas tend to have a lot more effect from this incision. Also, patients with tiny eyes. If you're doing a hyperopic eye and the white-to-white -white measurement's 10 millimeters in a very small anterior segment, that same incision is going to cover a larger arc length and therefore cause even more flattening. So I encourage you to try this technique in your own patients. It's something you can do very easily with no extra instrumentation. And check out cataractcoach.com. Submit your video. Sign up for that free daily email and browse through the thousand videos that we already have, and you will be able to learn a lot.